Hi everyone, welcome back to this lab session of SVM. In the theory part or the intuition part, we have seen that how SVM, uh, how SVM algorithm is used to expand the margins, which help us uh, do the classification task. So let's start with the practical part. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to import a data set and from that data set, we are going to classify it. So let's look into the data set first and let's look into exactly what we need to do over here. So what I'm going to do is the first and foremost step is always the same. It's importing all the libraries. So yeah, get your laptop ready and let's start coding it out. Okay. So first is a pandas import pandas as pd let's import numpy we will be needing it some place may probably then let's import seaborn as sns let's import matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot as plt and let's write matplotlib in line let's check if everything is fine Okay, there's a typo let's hope yeah so our code is working just fine we have imported all the necessary libraries that we need now we are going to call our data set so we have our data set the data set name is salary data set okay, let's first read the data set pd dot read csv name is salary data set it is in the same folder csv let's read it out let's see it pd yeah so here we have our data set so what kind of a data set it is so we have been given a task to predict the number of adults in us having a salary of 50k okay so these are the data of a couple of adults that are 32561 individuals and these are some of the features of each and every individual and we have to predict it out we have to create a classification model by which we can predict if that person's salary is uh, less than 50k or it will be more than 50k okay now where can this machine learning uh, model can help out so these kind of model can help out uh, your hr probably so what can what your hr can do is they will uh, just need to tuke in the details Okay, like the, they have to give age or the education, qualification, occupation, all of these, and then they can get a salary. Okay, that uh, they can just pray, say the person that you should be getting less than 50k or you should be getting more than 50k. So, this machine learning can is very uh, this machine learning model is very useful for or our for our HR team. So, uh, let's tuke in the changes now. You can see, uh, there is one. Uh, feature which is not needed okay, this is so let's drop it first and let's uh, evaluate it much uh, again later okay so let's save it to a variable salary okay store it out let's do salary dot head okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the unnamed zero okay so so for doing it we need to write salary dot drop and let's check uh, what are the parameters inside of it so the parameters are label axis we have to mention which axis it is it is axis one so we will mention axis one label which label it is so it is unnamed zero and we will mention in place equals to true okay so let's copy out unnamed zero the name rather than writing it copying it is the best uh, approach okay axis as i said is equal to one and let's mention in place okay now let, let me show you what happens if you don't write in place equals to true so salary dot drop so it has been dropped completely but if you check again it hasn't been dropped okay it just shows that it has been dropped but uh, it's not uh, stored back it over there okay so what i can do is just make sure in place is equal to true just to reflect the changes to the uh, la, the data set okay let's say so now you can see that it has been dropped completely the first column and this is our data set 
now again if you see there are many features which we don't really need so age is something that we might need education number is we something which we might need gender might be something more okay so uh, sometimes we have seen that there's a gender bias on jobs also which is very bad okay and some companies like google and microsoft has proven the world wrong that there is no some kind of gender bias so yeah that's a good thing okay so let's do something let's do some sort of a eda and know which are the features which uh, can be helpful for me to build this classification model so let's start with the eda part in our uh, next video so let's catch up in our next video